Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. A very warm welcome for our Christmas morning celebration. We begin with O Come, All Ye Faithful. Oh my 
Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand to sing the glory of the next house.
May all the words we sing and hear and read and speak point us ever closer to the living word, your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I was thinking during the week, well, I, was, I was reading on social media about a, a church having a fundraiser and they were using it to choose a particular carol that you could block for an entire Christmas. So whoever paid the most could block a particular carol from all the services over Christmas. But I thought, well, if you could only choose one carol to be your desert island disc, the only one you would hear all Christmas, which one would it be? For me, it would be O Come All Ye Faithful, or possibly All the Fathers Heart Begotten, there are a couple of contenders, or In the Midwinter, or <laughs> I, I, I'm in trouble putting it down to one. And I thought, you know, some people have a favourite hymn. Uh, if you would only choose one hymn that you would hear for the rest of your life, what would that hymn be? And what about a scripture reading? If there was one particular reading from scripture, which one would it be? Well, for me, that was the easy one. It would be the prologue to John's Gospel. The, the verses we've heard this morning, John chapter 1, verses 1 to 14, but read in the version I read this morning from the, the King James Version. There's something majestic and poetic about it that makes me want to hear those words again, to, to listen to them, to read them, to bathe in them, to ponder them in my heart day after day. There's, there's so many captivating things. There's the image of a light shining in darkness and the darkness not able to overcome it. It's always a powerful image. It's one which has been there from the beginning of Scripture when God created everything. He began by creating light and darkness. Isaiah talks about the people in darkness seeing a great light. And that whole idea of dark and light, about light being the presence of God, dark being the separation from God, runs right throughout Scripture. It's always a wonderful image to, to reflect on, but probably more so now this year than ever, after almost two years of a global pandemic, two years of going in and out of lockdown, in and out of restrictions, being spread out at distance across church, wearing masks, being told we can do this, we can't do that, you can only have so many people in your house, and so on. It's been a tough couple of years. It's, it's been challenging in so many ways, and so, a lot of people have found it a difficult time for their mental health. We've been living through a period of extreme darkness. And John reminds us that whatever we face, whatever darkness we face in this world, it can't be overcome by the light of Christ. In spite of everything that's happened, the light of Christ still holds out hope for us. But one of the hymns that we've been singing a lot over the past year is, what is our hope in life and death? Christ alone, Christ alone. You know, I can't offer you hope. No other human being can offer you hope. No ruler, no monarch, no businessman, no scientist, no doctor. Nobody can give you hope except Christ alone. But all we can do is point you on to Christ, the source of all hope and the source of all light. John tells us he came onto his own and his own received him not. But as many as received him to them gave him power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe in his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And that's where we find our hope. We can't find it ourselves. We can't create it, we can't manufacture it, we can't make it. Our hope comes from being born of God, from being born again of Jesus Christ. Not born in the natural way, not born of the flesh, but beginning a new life in Christ. You know, it's all too easy to be those who John describes as those who received him not. Now how many people, when Jesus walked this earth, how many people were there and listened to him teach? How many people were fed and feeding the 5,000? How many were there and witnessed the miracles? How many were there and saw the triumphal entry into Jerusalem and still at the end of the day cried, crucified? 
thousands of people who saw Jesus, who knew Jesus, who listened to Jesus, who witnessed what he did, and yet received him not. And it's the same, it's no different today. Sometimes we say, but you know, I will, but just not today. I'll do it when I'm a bit older, when the mortgage is sorted out, when the kids are older, when I have less to think about, when work is more settled. Do you know, what does tomorrow hold for you? Which one of you can guarantee me that you'll still be here tomorrow? We have no certainties in this life. Tomorrow is never guaranteed. None of us know what today will bring to us, let alone a week, a month, a year down the line. How many of us will still be here this time next year? I don't want to guess. I, I have no idea. But none of us know what the future holds. And that's why it's important to make that decision to commit our lives to Christ, to know Christ, to follow Christ, to be born again of water and the Holy Spirit. Christmas is about celebrating the birth, but it's also about preparing for and celebrating our rebirth. I wonder what was under your tree this morning. I'm not going to tell you what was under my tree. I didn't spoil it all. Did you get what you wanted? Did you find all the presents that you'd asked for beautifully wrapped, sitting under the tree? Was Santa good to you this year? I know some of you probably got a bag of coal, but most of you are fairly good, I think, most of the year. But under the tree, with all these beautiful presents, wrapped in glorious wrapping paper, looking fantastic, and we rip them open and we become excited to receive the gifts that we wanted and asked for. And maybe the surprises we didn't expect. And it makes us smile and feel good that somebody has taken the time, the effort, the energy, the love, and the money to buy us Christmas presents. Somebody has thought about us and thought it's worth spending our time on this person. And all those gifts are wonderful. They're lovely. And I'm always very happy to get gifts under the Christmas tree, whatever they are. Do you know what? But when you think about it, lovely as they are, they have no real significance, no eternal significance or value. Because, like everything else, they'll come and they'll go. They'll turn into dust one day. The only gift that really matters at Christmas is wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger at Bethlehem. And it's the new birth, the new life that He can bring to us. And in our working of the Holy Spirit, that takes us frail, fragile, and broken as we are, and transforms us and brings us new life. It turns us from being those who received him not into the sons and daughters, the children of God. I have no beautifully wrapped boxes to give you this morning, but I can point you to that real gift of Christmas. And then it's up to you to hold out your hands and to receive him into your hearts and into your lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of all, we pray for your church. We give thanks for all who celebrate Christmas, all of your worship in churches, and in their homes, all who acknowledge Jesus in their midst, renewed by the great mystery of Christmas, we may live out our faith in love and in joy. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ is Emmanuel, God with us, help us to know his presence among us and to be transformed by his power, that in our worship our words and our actions, we may reflect something of the glory of the light of the world to those with whom we share our lives. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord, we pray for your word, for the poor, the refugees, those oppressed and persecuted, and all who are living in hardship. We with all who are trying to bring them practical support, emotional strength, 
and personal respect. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Loving Father, we pray for all who are sick and those who have to work today and every day caring for others. As the COVID virus hangs over us, we pray for all who are suffering. Grant wisdom to doctors and researchers, insight and compassion to political leaders, endurance to patients, and courage to family and friends. Lord, in your mercy, we thank you for our families and loved ones. We ask you to gain and bless them, and especially any who are away from home at this time. May we all be united in your love. We pray for the elderly and those who are alone or feeling lonely or depressed. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks that you came to earth to lift us up into heaven. You took upon you our life that life could be eternal. We remember loved ones who have passed away this year and those whom we have spent Christmases past with. Lord, grant to them the gift of life and joy eternal. May we share with them one day in your kingdom and glory. <coughs> Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Let us all rejoice in praise and adoration of our loving God. Accept our praise, receive our thanksgiving, bless our celebrations, and may the wonder of the gospel come alive in our hearts this Christmas morning. Merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name will be the Prince of Peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The hymn of the offertory in the bleak midwinter.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to hear our hearts and our All glory and honor be yours, always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, who for love of our fallen race humbled himself, and on this day he was born of the Virgin Mary by the power of your Spirit and lived as one of us. In this mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused his light to shine in our hearts, to give knowledge of your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. In him we see our God made visible, and so are caught up in the love that God we cannot see. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and sing our joyful hymn of praise.
gifts of God for the people of God. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of all of
Mary's come among us that only child of Bethlehem could a light of faith illumine our hearts and shine in our words and deeds through him who is Christ the Lord. Amen. Christ who by his incarnation gathered and governed all things earthly and heavenly, fill you with his joy and his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you all. Tomorrow we have our usual Sunday service at half past eleven, and then again on the second of January. But there's no midweek service this coming week. There, at the back of the church are the envelopes for the free will offerings for next year. If you haven't already gotten yours, they're sitting in the back of the street, and they should be arranged alphabetically. But if you could also take some for family, friends, and neighbours and deliver them, it'd be a great help. Uh, the more of them we can get out this week, the better. And for those of you who are here on uh, Wednesday night, the carol service, you saw the painting that was presented to Anne and Christine. They very kindly left it in the back of the street because uh, quite a few people asked to see it up close. So it, it's sitting in the back of the street for you to admire and wear it. All that remains is for you to wish you all a very happy and peaceful Christmas. Our final hymn, Heart the Herald Angels Sing, Glory to the Newborn King. 